there is general perception that it is very expensive to go underground, so do not go underground. But there is underground and there is underground. Basement space is expensive because you need to use reinforced concrete structure to hold up uh, the void. And therefore, the cost per cubic meter of, of volume is about a thousand dollars. Per square meter of floor space, about five thousand meters. But if you go in a cavern, you make a hole in a cavern, you can use a hundred dollars. So it's one tenth the cost. If you go deep enough, you find rocks and you can create caverns, and the space will meet your space requirements. Now, that is the, the, the trick. But uh, who wants a cavern? Nobody wants a cavern. So, the MND, you know, the UMPTF, Underground Master Planning uh, Task Force. Oh, yes. oh, I, I get lost all the acronym, Task Force. That's six years. All the agencies, oh yeah, very interesting, very interesting. But me, no thank you. Uh, someone else, perhaps. So, mean that led the way with the underground MO facility in Mandai. So, uh, direction, move out the ML, uh, Army Depot by 2000. He was very kind, give us 10 years. <laughs> From, say, get out to actually move out uh, 10 years. So, we start looking around Singapore and say, where is the Grand Singapore, the center part? And then say, where you enter the rocks, the quarries. Why quarries? Obviously, there was good rocks there, otherwise the quarry operator wouldn't be so stupid, make a hole in the ground. And because there's a hole in the ground, then I don't need to go in so deep to, to drive my tunnels in. So we went around exploring all the quarries and found Mandai quarries the best. So that's why we built. Now, the green spot is not the UAF. The UAF is a red spot. The green spot is my dream that we're going to have uh, 100 hectares underneath 100 million meter cube of reservoir, underground reservoirs. That's a dream. For seven years, I tried to persuade uh, POB. POB said, no, no, it's so expensive. And they said, you know what? You can give me free, maybe I consider. But you give me free, I consider what you are. <laughs> this whole business, how to do. Uh, they didn't say, I want it. They said, I will consider. But anyway, come back to your challenge of underground. To develop underground within 100 hectares of land. Have we gone above ground? We need 1,000. Have we accepted the norms that were used by the U.S. Department of Defense and NATO? We need 240. But I say, actually, uh, we can do better. We can do 100. But we need to do technology development to develop a new codes that we allow this to happen. So that's what the technology development. We spent twelve million dollars and we saved 140 hectares of land. So when we start working on, on technology development, uh, the main dev okay, are you sure I have enough money? We say, yeah, twelve million now. We spent four million dollars doing all the studies, eight million dollars testing, including building a tunnel complex in Sweden uh, to, to test over five years. After that, we had experts in the world. So, then from, uh, uh, from um, underground, we move of uh, MO, we move to Jurong under the sea. So, this is 150 meters under the sea. So, when PM finally opened the, the facility, he said, more broadly, the JRC demonstrates how we must constantly think out of the box, be bold in tackling our challenges be tenacious in execution in order to create new spaces for ourselves. So when I look around here, I say, all our agencies have been doing that. How else? 80% of Singaporeans are housed by HDB. Which country has ever done it? We have done it. How come we have got DTSS, that service, uh, um, almost three quarters of Singapore, we have done it. So all agencies, but in the past, the demand for integration is not so strong because we have enough of land. Because now we've got less land, so we have to work together and therefore we need the agencies to integrate in their uh, development much more than they've done in the past. Uh, 